grace and mercy and peace to you from God our Father, from our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The text for this morning's meditation as we celebrate the Epiphany is that Old Testament reading from Isaiah chapter 60. Who here will admit to being a complainer? Come on. Uh, we, got, we got a few people. Luke, your hand up real fast back there. <laughs> because he's got to work with me every day. That's why. <laughs> we all have something to complain about. One of the things that I complain about this time of year is how dark it is. 4.45 is too early for the sun to set, right? But imagine living in the little town of Barrow, Alaska. Now, that Barrow is located on the farthest north tip of the state of Alaska, above the Arctic Circle. If you think it's dark here in Wisconsin, you haven't seen anything. You see, in Barrow, Alaska, the sun sets in the afternoon of November 18th, about a week before Thanksgiving, and it doesn't rise again until January 24th. 65 days of darkness. 65 days when the sun never shines. The sun doesn't show itself for over two months of the year. But... When the sun does, does rise, even that just that little bit for a moment on January 24th, the whole town comes out to celebrate because finally there is light again. Today, in God's Word, in our Old Testament reading, it talks about a different kind of light and also a different kind of darkness. And when this special light begins to shine through that ugly darkness, the results are much more spectacular, much more joyous than anything you could experience in Barrow, Alaska. Now there are 12 days in the Christmas season. January 6th, this past Thursday, is the official beginning of the Epiphany season of our church year. Now an Epiphany is something that reveals itself or shows itself. In Barrow, Alaska, after 65 days of darkness, the sun finally reveals its glory to every, for everyone to see. That's an Epiphany. In the church year, the epiphany is when the Son of God reveals His glory for everyone to see. And so now for the next seven weeks, we will be in the epiphany season and the scripture readings, the hymns, the messages, everything that we will see and hear and sing and pray in our worship services will serve for one purpose, and that is this, to reveal the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. The festival of Epiphany can really be summed up in one phrase, from darkness to light. Arise, God says to you, shine for your light has come and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. See, God's word pictures you and me and the rest of this world as a, a group of people living in darkness, people who have been waiting and waiting and waiting again for the sun to rise. See, God says, darkness covers the earth, thick darkness covers the people. And you know, it doesn't take a lot of effort on our part to see that our world is a very dark place, spiritually dark. We can see the evidence of spiritual darkness just by looking around us. We've heard the news of accounts of Muslim extremists killing Christians in Africa. Missionaries held captive in Haiti, the killing of the unborn. And we see it, we see the spiritual darkness all around us. All we have to do is look around us, watch people, listen to them talk, see what they do, and it becomes clear that our world is a very dark place, spiritually speaking. But you know the most frightening place to look, my friends, is right here within each and every one of us. Well, there are all kinds of television shows and ads and programs, magazine articles, and probably even some tweets and podcasts telling you that you, you, are, you have an incredible amount of good inside of you, an incredible amount of strength inside of you. All you need to do is just reach deep within yourself and you'll see just how good you really are. However, that, that isn't the case, is it? Because over and over again, people look within themselves for strength to bear up under trying circumstances, and that strength just isn't there. 
We'll look within ourselves for something good. But the more closely we look, the more clear it becomes that there is nothing there but selfishness and materialism. God sees your soul as a very dark place, a place full of sin. Indeed, thick darkness is over the people. But, God says, the Lord rises upon you and his glory appears over you. My friends, the birth of our Lord Jesus is described in the scriptures as the rising of the sun on a very dark place. The sun rises and the darkness disappears. So what happens to the darkness of your sin and guilt when Jesus rises in your life? It disappears. Jesus shines his forgiveness and his grace into your life and that darkness in your soul disappears. If you feel guilt in your life, guilt from committing sin after sin, guilt from trying to make things right with God, even though you know you can never do it, then you're someone who is trapped in darkness. But I want you to know this. Jesus Christ was born into this world for the sole purpose of doing what you and I could never do. Make everything right between us and God. And we know that our, our sins are freely forgiven because Jesus has died for all of our sins on that cross. And then you can just feel that guilt just melt away. And it's as though the sun has risen in Barrow, Alaska for you. And finally, you can see that because of Christ, everything, everything is good between you and God. And you've gone from darkness to light. This is epiphany. When you were trapped in the darkness of sin and now see and believe in the glory of Jesus Christ, this is epiphany. When you stop trusting in yourself for your salvation and trust in Christ, that's what happened to those wise men from the east. Every year, these, these Gentiles from a faraway land are the focal point of the epiphany season. They came from a place where no one knew about the Christ. No one knew about the true God who was sending a Savior. But through the work of the Holy Spirit, they knew. And when they saw his star, they knew that the Messiah had come. And so these men left their land of spiritual darkness because they wanted to see and they wanted to worship this Christ. Oh, they made that long trip to Jerusalem. And quite honestly, they were probably pretty surprised to see that the city they were in and Jerusalem was just as spiritually dark as the land from which they had come. But we know that finally they found the Messiah. Isaiah here in our text talks about these wise men in verse 3. Nations shall come to your light and kings to the brightness of your rising. Then later on in verse 6, it says, All those from Sheba shall come, they shall bring gold and frankincense, and shall bring good news, the praises of the Lord. There in the, in the form of a little child, the wise men saw the very light of the world. They saw him because there was the glory of God and it filled them with a spirit of awe and worship. They had gone from darkness to light and they rejoiced and they gave this child their precious gifts. <coughs> Epiphany is often called the, the Gentile Christmas. You ever heard that? Because one of the main reasons and one of the main themes of the Epiphany season is that Christ is a light, not just for a select few people like the Jews, but for all people everywhere. Epiphany is when anyone, anyone living in the darkness of sin, people like you and me and those wise men from the East, anyone can come and see the glory of God revealed through the person of Jesus Christ. Just as the sun rises on every nation, on every kind of people, no matter where you are, just as the sun every morning rises on you, so it is with Christ, his grace, his forgiveness, his salvation. It rises and shines on the Jews in Bethlehem, on the wise men from the east, and it rises on you and me. And so we worship him. We find our salvation in him. And no matter who you are, no matter who you are, no matter what you've done, you can go from darkness to light. 
And no matter how dark the world becomes, the light of Jesus Christ will never, ever stop shining for you. Now, don't feel too sorry for the people of Barrow, Alaska. While it's true, right now the sun never rises in Barrow, but that's not how it is during the summer. Four months from now, the sun will never set from May 10th until August 2nd for almost three months. The sun will not stop shining in Barrow, Alaska. People call that place, of course, the land of the midnight sun. And so it is with your soul. Once the grace and the mercy and the forgiveness of Jesus Christ rises in your life, oh, you will never stop shining. No matter how, how dark the world gets around you, Christ's love will always shine in your life and through your life. Spiritually, right now, you live in the land of the midnight sun. And my friends, I pray that during this epiphany season, you will see ever more clearly the glory of your Savior, Jesus Christ. And so arise, shine. Your light has come, and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. In his precious name, amen. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus now and always. Amen. I invite you now to stand.